Hello and welcome back to Zach Talks Hawks. This is the place where we, at least we used to, talk uh, quite a bit about Seattle Seahawks football. My name is Zach and welcome back to our channel where uh, we got a great game to unpack here between the Seattle Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals as Seattle moves to 6-3 and three and continues their reign in the NFC West, uh, playing against a Cardinals team that really needed to win and ultimately mistakes cost them this one and um, I am so excited to get back into the YouTube routine and we're going to start well this week uh, with our rundown for our takeaways from this game where Seattle uh, for a while was in doubt over whether they were going to get this win over Arizona and yet we we stand on a now six and three record this is way more than what many analysts thought Seattle would wind up winning this season and yet here they are right so my takeaways for this game is uh, a few things that I want to start unpacking for you here on the show and, and first things first let's let's talk about that man Geno Smith as this was the game this was the game that I wanted to see out of Geno Smith he's played fantastic football there are pundits and people much smarter than i am out there that are saying you know can he be tossed into the mvp conversation i i don't know about that but we'll let that be whatever it'll be i'm just happy seattle's actually winning games and geno's playing well um nevertheless well enough to to partake in an mvp conversation but this is the game that was left out there uh, I've I've seen a, a, a disastrous game right against the 49ers. I've seen pretty decent blowouts. I've seen shootouts. I have seen games where he's not the center focus. But the game that I had yet to see from Geno Smith was can he get beaten down and get back up? Can he face adversity and win the game? Can he put the team in a position towards the end of the matchup that the other strengths on the team can rise to the occasion and win the game? Now, let's make no mistake. This offense runs behind Kenneth Walker III. That man is a beast. And yet, this is where my focus lies in analyzing this game. Because Gino was down early right you, they were down four at the end of one and it really kind of felt like these two teams were feeling each other out trying to understand where the strengths are and it, it felt like that this would be a game where arizona might get the upset however gino early on right there was a lot of football game left through pick six and that's the position i want to see him in right the offense didn't look explosive starting the day off he threw a pick six. Now, granted, it was a great play by the defender. It was a really designed swing pass. So um, you take that for what it's worth. If you do your scouting, you pretty much know that that's the read there. And um, there's a lot of things going against Seattle on that play call. Long story short. But I wanted to see, okay, Gino in the last few weeks has been great talking up the young rookies on the defense. We saw last week him kind of get a hold of Tyler Lockett and talk him up. Can Gino talk himself up? Can can Gino stay consistent and even keel? And when he gets, uh, I hate to say this expression, <laughs> punched in the mouth, can he get back up again? And sure enough, we got to see in this football game a Gino that rose to the occasion and ultimately played really well i think they showed a, a graphic in the game he was like 12 of 14 at one point post pick six and he was lighting it up and ultimately that's the kind of performance i want to see out of our quarterback and and he played very very well now i'm going to bring up uh the stats here and and we'll just talk about gino here real quick as you can see uh 
26 to 34 high completion percentage hovering around 77 76 percent 275 yards two touchdowns and an interception i really would have loved to see that three to one ratio play itself out on sunday but i'm not really going to complain because he played exceptionally well and towards the end of the fourth quarter as you can see his running stats six rushes for 38 yards he ran the ball exceptionally well in the fourth quarter uh utilizing the read option of all things Pete Carroll using Geno Smith in the read option who knew who knew that that was an option for them to have and um ultimately all the weapons on offense came together you had Kenneth Walker uh again another 100 yard game he had two touchdowns on the day Noah Fant, I think his best day as a Seahawk came came through with a lot of receptions, but you can see Fant, Lockett, DK each had five receptions. Geno's doing a good job of evenly distributing the ball with Lockett and DK catching touchdown passes. And how about that throw to DK in the back of the end zone? That was that was wild. But um, ultimately. All the tools on offense are, are coming together. And I, I really do think it's because Gino is rose to the occasion. He's bounced back well in this game where early on it didn't look like that he was going to have a very stellar day. It kind of looked like he was going to be average again. And yet this is this is the kind of performance we, we want from him. Not not throwing 60 some times a game like Patrick Mahomes did this past week, but but a man that can manage the game, get the most out of the weapons around him. And that's what we want to see as Seahawks fans. And ultimately that that resulted in a win. I want to talk to you about also this defense because who we got to see uh, quite a number of great plays happen. Uh, this guy up here on the screen, we we got to see him record his sack. Uh, it seems like Shelby Harris has had a very uh, a quiet season, but yet uh, pretty 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 noticeable in, in terms of uh, how he conducts himself from from week to week. You can tell like the the folks on the defensive front respect him. Speaking of uh, another guy that that got in the backfield, Bruce Irving, you can see it down there. So both of those veterans getting sacks on the day, really getting after Kyler Murray, hemming them in. Uh Kyler was able to get away and arguably his best run of the day resulted in a forced fumble. So uh, that was a Ryan Neal production as he was able to poke the ball out and ultimately it resulted in an Arizona turnover and really changed the tide of the game. But uh, what what more can be said about this defense, right? They are insane. And Usheno Nwosu is just a monster and what a free agent pickup from uh la that seattle wound up with him because he is just continuously supplying pressure off the edge that to be frank was non-existent in this defensive unit last year one of my biggest gripes about this team last year is where's the pass rush where where are we able to hem in a quarterback and, and keep him contained and Wosu is definitely the guy that can make that happen and having guys flying off the edge like uh, like Bruce Irving uh, definitely adds another wrinkle that I personally didn't expect in this game. Of course, Jordan Brooks leading the way in tackles on the day. You're going to see that number uh, increase well because uh, he's he's the heart and soul of this defense. If Jordan Brooks goes down. I'd be very curious to see if um, like a Cody Barton or a Ben Burke Irvin kind of step into that role and how they would compare because everything that we were told about Jordan Brooks coming in and replacing Bobby Wagner is coming true. <laughs> uh, he's he's definitely a leader on that defense and ultimately you got to have some folks in there that are willing to lead because this is stacked in terms of a young rookie class that's that's making a name for themselves and i really enjoy what i'm seeing out of this defensive unit uh, over the last few weeks but uh ultimately today against a very rangy quarterback in kyler murray let's be frank the Arizona Cardinals have problems. They something's going on with Murray and Kingsbury, and it's just not it's just not working. And D Hop is trying to figure out his way back into the offense, but Seattle did a really good job at 
containing Hopkins as well. So, uh, got to remember, seven out of the 21 points that Arizona scored was from a pick six. So, um, Seattle's defense, again, steps up in a big way. I think they're a kind of team that's going to continue to grow and continue to impress as the season goes along. And this is where we're going to get into this part of the video where, man, I, I can't believe I'm talking about this, but it deserves to be said. See, Seattle is first in the NFC West. And whether folks want to admit that or not, Seattle's in a position right now where they most certainly should be favored to win their division. San Francisco's not healthy. They've swept Arizona. And nobody really knows what's going on with the Los Angeles Rams coming off of a Super Bowl. They certainly don't look like they are fighting for pretty much anything right now as Matthew Stafford's heard. And they're just really, really struggling right now in L.A. And that was the biggest competition that I thought Seattle was going to face all year. This division that everybody was hyping up between the Rams and the Niners kind of just felt like a division that nobody really wants to win. And Seattle goes, okay, we'll take it back then. And here they are at six and three, certainly beyond my expectations of the year for this squad. I thought by now that Gina would have been benched and we would have seen Drew Locke and we would have flipped back and forth between wins. I think in my prediction video, they were, let's see, there's six and three, so nine weeks. Yeah, so they would have been sitting on about four wins so far this year. And they're, they're playing really well right now. And you look forward in the schedule. Where do they play next week? Well, they go to Germany and they play the Bucks. Well, the Bucks aren't exactly world beaters right now. I think the Bucks are a very desperate team, um, given where they are in their division and Tom Brady leading a comeback drive in the waning moments of his game. Uh, I can see them being desperate, but are, are we really going to fool ourselves in saying that Seattle's an underdog in that game? I mean, Vegas said Seattle's underdogs in this game and yet handled Arizona very well. The league and commentators alike have got to wake up because this team's got a really good shot of hosting a home playoff game. Maybe just one. <laughs> now, let's, let's not get too crazy here, uh, but just one. And I, I think... If you would have told Seattle fans at the beginning of the preseason that, hey, you know, through nine games, they're going to have twice as many wins as they do losses, and they are leading in the West, and they're not simply leading by, you know, one game. They're leading by multiple games, and they are better than other teams in the division. They are healthier. They're more well put together in terms of Arizona, and the quarterback play is arguably one of the best in the division. You, many Seahawks fans would have said, well, you're nuts. There's no way. There's no way that that would happen. And yet here we are. So uh, what do I say to you? I say to you, dare to dream, right? Dare to dream that Seattle very well might have a playoff caliber team on their hands and start to get excited over where this team's going to go moving into uh, the back half of this season. Because is it a possibility that the wheels could fall off and this team is in shambles by the time we're done and they're a uh, less than 500 team. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the magic with Gino could, could end at any time, or this is the quarterback we're getting. This is the defense we're getting. I'm cool with that. Uh, certainly way more than what I ever thought we would do, but uh, ultimately I'm, I'm not here to complain. I, I really want to be, uh, in the moment with this team, and uh, I, I hope you are too. What are your biggest takeaways from Seattle's uh, squaring off against Arizona this past week? Uh, where do you think Seattle's strengths are, and where is their ceiling for this year? I want to hear from you down in the comments. Um, 
I have worked through some sound issues with uh, the NCAA 14 content and the Madden 12 content. Uh, just have not been able to run capture video on any of those things. And uh, I, I think I have them fixed. My hope is, is that you're going to have maybe a double header for NCAA 14 content tomorrow. Um, we will see. But I do know that I wanted to do this and get this out today so that we can talk a little bit of Seahawks on this channel. We haven't done that in a while. And I hope to get back on a consistent schedule with you soon. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And uh, until we meet again, my name is Zach and keep talking Hawks. Bye.